again again we'll take help of that formula because i think <coughs> because that formula maximum we are trying to what like we are trying to utilize it maximum to maximum extent what happen we'll use that formula will be on safer side okay no you have in front of you formula uh, what is what is alpha beta see the the whole idea is like what is alpha beta is what we have to search so i'll i'll give a rough diagram it'll go like this no till infinity it'll go like this now with what i should measure that alpha beta no this is infinity there's a lambda this distance is what they given a and this is 30 degrees if this is 30 this will be 30 okay we'll put it here now this 30 i think okay i'll, I'll indicate 30 there huh? you'll get confused here hmm, let's see that so what what is first uh, so what, what is alpha beta i i think th this should be the alpha alpha with what you should measure alpha you are going to measure with perpendicular not not with this you should measure like this huh? this is alpha and and this is beta getting now and what is the perpendicular distance the perpendicular distance is what this one r perpendicular i'll write in the formula the d is what is r perpendicular or you can put d here what is given a is given not d at a distance c so we should calculate that d that one so first we'll calculate the d <coughs> so what is the value of d will be cos in, in mobile if you you can turn it if you want to can rotate it no problem hmm? uh, cos beta cos 30 should be equal to d by a so d equal to a cos 30 a root 3 by 2 So where all D is there, I should replace that one. So what is alpha now? Alpha is ninety. So, so sine thirty is d by a. Oh, okay, so, so sine thirty, no? Yeah. So this will be sine thirty. So a a by two will come. So what is d is equal to just a by two. Keep it here. Now what is a What is alpha? Alpha is ninety. Beta will be sixty. No, I'll write minus sixty. Why? Because if you measure beta opposite to alpha, you have to put <coughs> that as positive. If you measure beta in the direction of alpha, then you have to put a negative sign. So why, why, why you are uh, doing like this here? What is the reason behind? So you go back to the convention. So how we measured beta? If you measure, I took alpha positive. If I if I measure, I measured alpha like this. I took this positive. I measured beta open opposite to alpha. That's why I took negative. And all the negative of negative I substituted here. Like this means now in in all the numericals. So there's a convention. Next again, you go for. Please make observation carefully. Hmm. Come for this, and this one. Uh, look, look at carefully sign here now. Now alpha is what positive, no? Beta when I measure opposite to alpha, I, I took positive. I agree. See here. Beta. I think I can A able to notice all of you. Green color. I'm shading it. What the convention says? If you measure beta opposite to alpha, it should be negative. in the limits we put in but after putting limits then when we are using that formula what is the thing if you measure beta opposite to alpha 
it should be positive. If you measure beta in the direction of alpha, you should take that negative because in the limits we made <coughs> minus beta to plus alpha. So when you're using this formula, what, is the, what, what it says, if you measure beta opposite to alpha, beta will be positive. If you measure beta in the direction of alpha, beta should be negative. Got it idea? So why you are doing this? To justify my answers practically. <laughs> the mathematics is what? The way I'm using like this. Okay, now take take this one. Okay, how, you, how we are measuring beta now? Beta I'm measuring in the direction of alpha. So what should be the beta? Minus 60. So substitute everything in the formula, you'll get the required answer. So what is the field? They're just observation, not, nothing else is there. Let me write the answer. So the field strength at point P. Okay, now look at this. Uh, sir, like here, uh, high cap, J cap, because how the rod was oriented. The rod was oriented along Y axis, no? When we derive this. <laughs> but what about here? It is oriented along X axis. So how do that I cap, J cap you are going to use? Uh, what is this I cap term? The one which is perpendicular to rod, no? And what, do we, the, what about this J cap term? <coughs> one which is parallel to the rod. Things will change here. Things will change here. So therefore what you should do here according to this formula. What is this? This will indicate the component perpendicular to the rod. What about this? This will indicate the component parallel to the rod. No, no, you are going to calculate this one. Here what when you should write J cap, huh? not I cap. Uh, are you getting now? So it's, you can't just use blindly the formula here because the orientation of rod uh, what we derived for y axis, no, the rod was along y axis. Now the rod I made along x axis. Intentionally I made so that you should notice that. So when you're using this formula, this formula was derived with rod oriented along what? Along y axis. So therefore, what is this component? Perpendicular to the rod. So therefore, so instead of i cap, what you should write? One which will be directed perpendicular to the rod. What about this? One which is directed parallel to the rod. So slightly, I'll change it here only. So what is this component now will be parallel. We, we, we are bringing now what is the perpendicular will become J cap parallel will become I cap. This will be Y axis. This is X axis. No? So how, how parallel perpendicular component will be along y axis parallel unit vector will be along I think problem to problem it will change so we are now we are made still more very generalized one it is still more better not I cap J cap along that one here so what is the now component which is perpendicular J cap so the formula now will further reduce it. Hmm? Uh, so y, y minus G, I think this should also not be there, no? This negative sign will not come. Minus, say like, how do you can say all this one, sir? Say, just use, say, now take this a magnitude. Huh? So it's very simple, sir. How do you can say that it will be like this only? So you do one thing, you assume a small element here. Due to this small element of the field, the field will be somewhere like this. No? So therefore it is going to have two components, one J cap, other I cap. This will be a perpendicular component, this is a parallel component. I, I'm making still more very, very, very generalized here. So what you should do here afterwards, you have to remember just the magnitude, perpendicular to the rod, parallel to the rod. Depending upon the orientation, that J cap, I cap has to be introduced. Got the idea? the general application of the formula to run. So this will not come. So in place of D, what will be there now? In place of D, what will be there? D is equal to A by 2. Because A is given for us, not D, no? So therefore I'll write A by 2. Sin alpha, sin 90, sin of minus 60. 
this should be equal to parallel perpendicular component. Keep it here now. So next again. Cos 90. So let, let's simplify 2G lambda by A sine 91 root 3 by 2 I can cos 90 0 <coughs> cos, the, cos 60 will be 1 by 2. So I think th this will become only okay there's a magnitude of so there's a gravitational field strength it will be this much here. and see uh, my answer justified sir because uh, i f then feel what happened how it will be like you take small element how the field the field will be directed like this no the field will be directed here so it should be in x y plane i think justified uh, this is j cap those things i'll indicate this is e bar and this is the best formula you remember the generalized formula i think this is far more better than the earlier what we have this one so now, now look at the beta alpha. I think you have to be careful also with sino. If beta measured opposite to alpha, beta will be positive. Beta measured in the direction of alpha, beta should be negative. Same thing alpha. If alpha measured opposite to beta, alpha will be positive. If alpha is measured, if alpha is measured opposite to in the direction of beta, alpha should be taken negative. Okay, do practice, uh, just orient the rod in different different things, semi-infinite, finite and work out here. Huh? I'll give some assignment based on the rods only. Today you can work out. Huh? Because in books, very less problems are there. Hmm. Okay, I'll wind up the class. Hmm? I have it out, sir. Ama, yeah. Sir, before there was minus G lambda by D, no, sir. Why did you remove that minus, sir? That was to show that it was along negative x-axis. No, See, I don't think now mathematically here. This particular, the field at this point will be what? You'll have two components, no? Dex and dy. That's why that minus i cap is brought. Hmm? Now, if you if you if you make this rod along positive x-axis, tell me, like, do you get minus i cap? Should not be there, no? So I should modify that also. Okay, got this. So I think the, the, the best formula is what you better to remember than this one. Huh? Than the earlier one, no? This is a very generalized formula. See, what, what we derived with the rod oriented along y-axis. If the rod gets oriented along x-axis, so same, same formula, see magnitude is same, but the directions we have to be a little bit careful. So how to do that one is better assume small element here. Due to the small element, how the field here will be like this. No? So therefore, so there will be perpendicular components should be along y-axis, parallel components should be along x-axis. <coughs> That's what we are bringing it here. It was along negative x-axis. It all depends upon the orientation. It came due to that particular orientation. Now the orientation is along x-axis, so no sign will be there. Just now I explain. Or else you do one thing, derive this, you will end up with this formula. <laughs>